Has your website recently lost a ton of traffic? Has Google been playing silly games again? Well, fear not my friend, because in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to diagnose a drop of traffic on your website and exactly what you can do about it. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing you'll wanna do is to check your website analytics. So you'll see here, there's been a drop in traffic from July to August. So what we're now gonna do is look at what has caused this drop in traffic. And that's worth saying here, there's no way of finding out exactly what has caused this. So what we'll need to do is go through a process of elimination. So once we know where the drop in traffic has happened, there's really four main things that we're gonna to want to look at here. First is your backlinks. Have you recently been doing a link building campaign but you've suddenly stopped and have lost momentum on it? Next is just any general keyword movements. Are there some big keywords you were ranking for where your competitors are now outranking you? Next thing we'll want to consider is has there been any changes made to the website? Have you changed your website CMS? Have you deleted some pages recently so you've possibly ended up with some broken links? And then the final thing we'll need to check is has there been any major algorithm updates to which our website is no longer playing by Google's rules? So let's dive into each of these individually. So this drop we saw here from July to August, and you'll see this reflected here in SEMrush as well. And this will be the same with any SEO tool that you're using, whether it be SEMrush, Ubersuggest, SE Ranking, Ahrefs, or any of the others out there, you'll generally be able to see the same thing reflected. Although they do have their own ways of estimating traffic, you'll usually be able to see similar trends. Now you will probably know if you've been doing a link building campaign and have stopped. And I know that this was the case for us around this time where we stopped our link building efforts internally because we were just so busy with everything else that was going on. And you'll see this reflected if I click on the backlinks campaign here, you'll see that around May time and June, the backlinks started really dropping off. And also when we look at the actual keywords that we were ranking for, you'll see we picked up a lot of momentum when we were doing link building, but then this really tapered off after June, July time, and we weren't really picking up many new keywords until we started that link building campaign again toward the end of the year. And you'll see that then started really picking up again in terms of the organic keywords we were actually ranking for. And if we go back to the backlinks, you'll see again here after December 2021, those backlinks re really started picking up again where we started building the momentum again on our link building campaigns. But let's say for example, your link building campaigns haven't changed, or maybe you're not even doing any link building at the moment. What else has caused that drop in traffic on your website? Well, let's have a look at your current rankings. Now it's worth saying here that you probably will want an SEO tool in order to do this effectively. There are a number of SEO tools out there. There's also a number of free tools or at least tools that have free trials. SEMrush actually has a free trial. Uber Suggest is another one which I could believe you can use for free. And there are a number of tools you can use out there with limited access to at least help you to diagnose that drop in traffic. So what we're going to do is to come on to the organic research to look at our keywords that our website is ranking for. The next thing we'll want to do is just make sure the date range is set to the time where we saw the drop in traffic initially. What we're then going to want to do is filter by our top ranking keywords. We don't really care about keywords that are in like position 70 because even if that moved from position 70 to position 90, it's not really going to make any difference to our traffic because nobody is really going that far back in Google. So we want to filter this by our top ranking pages. We then want to find where there's been drop. So you'll see here by this column, this is showing us where we've dropped or increased in our keyword rankings. So you'll see we lost a, a search term here of need a website that's dropped down by one position, which again could, when we're talking about those top three, a lot of people are going to go with the you know top one, top two, top three results in Google. So if we've dropped down a couple of positions there, that can actually have a significant impact in traffic. The other thing we then want to check is, well, how much search volume are we actually talking about here? So if we've seen we've lost 5,000 visitors a month, it probably hasn't been caused by this keyword because it only has 260 approximate searches a month. But if we were to see we drop down one or two positions here and this had 6,000 searches a month, this could very well be the cause. You'll see another one we've lost a few positions of here is this one's gone from position one. So we definitely would have been getting a lot of traffic for this down to position three. 
there's another one which is alternative marketing. There's actually another version of that search term here, alternative marketing ideas, that's gone from position three to position four. So when you start to see these trends and you start to recognize and you look at the search volume and you think this is probably the culprit of our main drop in traffic, if you start to see a keyword that has big search volume reflective of your drop in traffic and you notice it's gone down a few keywords, now we can start looking at that page and trying to find out why we've lost rankings for this if it hasn't been due to our link building campaign, for example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type that search term into Google and then gonna look at what, where we're currently ranking for that position. So we're right now in position two, and then have a look at the competitors page as well. So I've got both of these pages open here. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is looking at our actual content on this page and asking myself, is this really optimized enough? Do we have enough content on this page in comparison to what our competitors got? Now, if you're wondering how to optimize a page for SEO, I did a video on this recently, so I'd highly suggest you checking that out after this video. I'll be linking to it at the end of this video, so make sure to check that out to give you some tips on how to optimize your pages to best rank for SEO. But assuming you know the basics of page optimization and you look through and you're, you're happy that you've got a lot of content on this page, you're optimized in terms of the headings, your image alt tags, your internal linking, external linking, you're ticking all of those boxes and you think you've got a better article than your competition, then maybe there's something else at play here. And maybe it's that your competitors have just got more links to their page than you have. So that's another thing that we can check here. So if I put our two URLs into SEO research tools, so I'm looking at this as an exact URL as opposed to the root domain. So this is now showing me the statistics for this specific page on the website. So we'll see this page actually has around 197 backlinks from about 64 domains. And if we then look at the page that we're ranking for, we've actually only got 51 backlinks from 22 domains. So we can see here that there's a big gap in terms of authority. So when Google is looking at these two pages, naturally this to them is the more authoritative page to be ranking for this search term because it has far more backlinks. So what I now know what we need to do in order to start pushing that up and outranking the competition here. But let's say we had more backlinks or our backlinks were about equal. So as far as Google's concerned, our pages are about the same in terms of authority it's then probably going to be a question of the content on the page. Maybe their content is newer, they've updated it recently, maybe it's better optimized. So that's when I want to be going into this page, updating the content, making it fresh, expanding it more, and that might just give us the edge to be able to outrank the competitor. Now let's say you've been through those pages, your competitor's got a crap article, your article is much better, you've got far more backlinks coming to that page, so there's more authority to your website, but your page still has dropped the rankings. Well, that might be because there are some fundamental issues that have occurred on your website that are now preventing it from ranking. This could be due to you changing your website CMS recently. Maybe you've deleted some pages on your website which has caused some broken links, all of these things can have a major impact on how your website ranks in search. So one of the best things we can do here is to run a site audit on our SEO tool. We can then look at where we've got potential gaps in our performance and see where the errors are. We might then see that we've got certain broken links, for example, that we can then rectify, which could potentially fix the issue. Again, this is gonna be a process of elimination at this stage because we don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but we have to go through these things to try and identify what the cause of the problem is. Now, if we've done all of these things, our website's looking healthy, our page is looking good, we've got the right amount of backlinks, it may just be because there has been a recent algorithm update by Google and our website is no longer playing by those rules that Google want to see. So there's a couple of options we have here. We can either again use an SEO tool like SEMrush to have a look and see where there has been algorithm updates. And you'll see this here in the notes sections when we're looking at organic keywords, SEMrush will actually tell us where there has been certain detections of high activity where a lot of pages have lost rankings or if there's been a core algorithm update. The other thing we can do is to go onto Google and type in Google algorithm changes.
and we can type in the kind of date or month range where we noticed a big drop in our rankings. We can then see if there was any major changes made to the algorithm and get a summary in terms of what actually happened there and where our page may be losing rankings. For example, a few years ago, Google started putting a lot of emphasis on their EAT guidelines, which stands for Expertise, Authority and Trust. This particularly affected websites that are in the financial services space or even the health spaces. So basically any industries where you're responsible for somebody's money or their health. And some of the big things they wanted to see here was to be able to identify who are the sources of information of a particular blog or a page on a website. So if you had a website that was churning out loads of content, but you didn't have any information about who was writing that content or what credentials they had, there was huge penalizations on those kind of websites because Google just couldn't verify that you had the expertise, authority, or trust to be writing content like that. So a lot of people, a lot of companies saw their rankings drop off a cliff just because of how their website was structured. So this is an example of where you would want to be looking through those algorithm updates and thinking, okay, does our website correspond to these new guidelines? Does our website match this new criteria that Google is looking for? Another thing Google has been putting a lot of emphasis on recently is their core web vital. So this is the performance of your website and effectively how fast it loads and the overall user experience on that page. So let's say you've got a very old, slow loading website and your competitors have got much faster websites, that might just be the thing that is giving them an edge above you. So you want to be looking at all of these factors when you're diagnosing a drop in traffic in order to find what it really is that's causing that issue. Again, unfortunately, there's no way of finding exactly what that thing is. But if you follow these steps that I've given you in this video, you will be able to, through process of elimination, start finding the core culprits of that drop in rankings and doing something about it. There's going to be another video coming up after this one where I'm going to be showing you five SEO quick wins you can start using to really start taking your organic search results to the next level. So I'll see you there.